Hello guys and welcome back to Strategic Command World War II World at War with our Axis playthrough. In the last episode, we took care of almost this entire turn, pretty much in one sweep, the rest of Japan and all of Italy pretty much. We've taken care of all of the naval stuff except for upgrades and maybe some Norwegian North Sea movements that I might have missed out on. We have a couple units to deploy. Namely, one of them being the Hungarian tank. So we're going to go ahead and just deploy that on... Hmm. We want to operate it. That's a good question. I'll just put it on the town that has a railroad while I figure that out. We've already done a lot of movements over here. Not all of them, but I wanted to get that deployed while it was on my mind. We do have a new destroyer. Z-31. Z-31. Hmm. Okay. Oh, we'll just pop that down right there. It's already fully upgraded with everything it can have, which is good. More patrols, more potential to go after Soviet subs. Speaking of, hey, look, we see this sub. It's on silent mode. Why is it on silent? I don't know why this thing's on silent mode. But with Germany's only maritime bomber they can even have, let's try and deal some damage to it. We dealt one damage. Well, that's not as good as the two I was hoping for. This thing already has an XP point. I think it's entirely just from raiding my stuff. I don't think they fought at all. That's just from raiding. Oof. Well, even if it was only one damage, we can take solace knowing that we have literally, by definition, decimated the enemy's strength. English joke that I don't expect any of you to understand aside, let's take the Hungarians and go back on the offense. Dealing three damage to the enemy army here. Pretty nice. Yeah, it had to recover to get back up to where it was. Let's attack with our weaker army. Dealing three damage. Taking two. Oof. And let's attack with the core this time. Dealing two damage and making the bitch run. The main thing is we want to have this like fully secured. Core or army doesn't matter too much. These could do with being repaired though reinforced so you know we can i don't have to pick we can move a number of things just not here because supply is not going to be that great apparently well, let's move this army right here does that help supply over here no no it's just a supply is going to suck there okay fair enough we'll move this army over here then and how supply over hither why is supply spreading so fucking bad? Oh my god, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. I can't put more than two guys against this enemy force without having some bad supply situation. Oh, we'll just move the core forward into bad supply, quote-unquote, territory. Because, well, it's at full strength anyway, so. I'd love to see this army try to get away from where it's placed. But with that offensive that was a success, we have taken the next town of Voro Shilag whatever and also i noticed since we moved our units away from my cop which i don't even know if we did that this turn fully yeah it was because we had the hq in the region we need to replace a garrison there so let's send one of the bulgarian garrisons let's operate that to my cop proper the oil is way more important than the town it's also more defensible than the town so, especially from an attack coming this way. So, let's just move the garrison there, have it take care of that. I will also take the 707th, operate them right here, which will take care of these two garrison points. Probably better defended from this side, but we have Yugoslavians there. This will do for now, just to have it in the correct region, in case I forget about it between episodes, which is very, very likely because I am posting multiple games right now, and I don't always remember things I say one, two, three episodes ago. So this is the smartest thing we can do. Let's reinforce this sub up to max. We got to get this sub with an advanced sub upgrade. My subs have a lot of refitting to do. They have so much experience. A lot of them are injured. They need their next technology level. So our rating game isn't going to be very impressive for a bit. We still have to upgrade this motor torpedo boat with its ASW. And honestly, now that we have two destroyers again, I think I'll use the two destroyers for going up here and dealing with this. Due to the larger range of the area, 
Because motor torpedo boats, as you might see, cannot go very far. They're perfect for patrolling this high-risk area. They could also do pretty well up here. It's not too big and crazy up here. But they're not going to keep up with a sub that might be trying to run away from us. If they ran away over here, there's no chasing them no matter what. But if they ran away here, there's a chance to catch them and a destroyer would be needed to actually do that. So the furthest I can get this one right now is over here. And that works for me. Because I'll probably position one on either end. I'll put one right here so any subs or here might have to go through it. And then I can put one just like here and have it able to patrol up and down repeatedly. With that in mind, let's move the Z2 destroyer this way where it can link up with the Prince Eugen Heavy Cruiser preparing for its front line. Most of my big ships are gonna go this way. These bombers here, medium bombers, they have some anti-naval capacity. So they're gonna be the ones that will support the patrol boats over here. See, they get some more use after all, isn't it great? We're just gonna mount up like a big fleet over here. We have good range on ships, so the bigger ships can really get in and out as quick as they want. We'll move the Bismarck and the Trippets. Ideally into the ports as close as we can possibly get. There's no other battleship, so Bismarck will go here. We'll move the Prins up a notch. We'll take the Admiral Shear, put it there. Kind of block the way a bit. Trippets will go up here, somewhere safer. Then we have two more battle cruisers. My battle cruiser here can reach almost everything up here in an instant, so I can kind of leave those back if I wanted to. But we're going to move them up just behind the first destroyer so they're kind of ready. The other one will be able to catch up pretty much no problem. And then that's taken care of. What upgrades do you guys have? Ground attack weapons, not that important for you. Long range aircraft, potentially fairly important for all of you, so. Let's just give you all long-range aircraft. This is more of a striking back capacity, though. This is like, we've hurt someone, they've run away, we want to still hit them. Or maybe something else has come down here because they found a motor torpedo boat. Like, that's what this is for. So, we don't need any ground attack on them. We'll save that money, but we'll still get in some upgrades in case it does come in handy. Then, there's maybe one or two other things to do. But the main thing remaining will be to look at the big front here. So... I'm immediately just going to reinforce these paratroopers. I'm going to reinforce this reconnaissance unit. I'm going to upgrade this tank unit to level 3. Ooh, level 3. And reinforce this army, recovering this front line. Now that we finally have supply there after moving Rommel up to the front, finally we can recover. And we just still have a problem with the amount of HQs we have, potentially due to the fact that this one is not fully reinforced. I don't know. Let's go ahead and reinforce Von Kuchler back up to max. Honestly, I don't think that the Soviets are really going to pull off any offensives here, so I'm going to take Von Bock. We're going to move him down to Minsk, slowly start to abandon buffing up these guys that are not seeing any combat anyway. Soviet national morale is steadily falling, so they'll start being less capable themselves, and I don't believe they have any HQs. I wiped out some good HQ power at the beginning. We'll take the Africa Field Artillery, Field Artillery, and hit the, yeah, the shock tanks, either them or them. There's no point hitting this core because this front's not really capable of attacking right now. They're recovering. So let's try to weaken these heavy tanks. We already wiped out half of their entrenchment. We wiped out all of their entrenchment. No matter what, it's not going to be a pretty attack. The anti-tank has better odds, actually, than an army. Well, it's the same odds, it's just on a higher scale. But that's actually, you know, perfect. It's a great trade and exactly what this is intended for. Why supply there so low? God, see, we, we need not just an HQ for the purpose of, you know, having an HQ. We need an HQ for the purpose of supply. Because with the weird road systems, like right here is not very well connected. I'm gonna go ahead and take that three to six, attack with the Africa anti-tank. We dealt six damage. We took two damage. That worked out better than we were supposed to have it work out. We can take the first army now, and we could trade that two to four and potentially wipe out their shock heavy tanks for arguably minimal casualties. I also could have bombed it. That was definitely an option. It's still an option. But I was hoping to save it for a enemy that isn't next to my artillery, which there are a couple that we can work on, certainly. So let's go without the, the bombs for now, I think. 
I gotta get this bomber somewhere. Maybe Kaluga would work for it for the time being while we don't have another HQ. I also could have operated Bombach over here, but I want to do this slowly to see if the AI reacts. Because it's still going to be till July till I can place the next HQ. It's going to be till probably August before I can finally move it. And by then some progress would definitely have been made. I could spare at least one bomber. Let's spare one. Trigger those interceptors too. Get some fighters doing something. Escorts. They took three damage. We took two damage. Oh my god. And then one to the bomber. How on earth are your fighters this capable? I have no idea. But... That was good. Uh, now we just barely can't make it over there, which is sad, but that's fine. We'll move towards there for right now. And damn, are these like, do they have level two fighters? There's no way to check the tech of an enemy normally. I do want to reinforce as much as possible. So we're gonna reinforce this front line, especially the ones that don't naturally have an attack next to them, but you know, some like this one do. But these tanks reinforce, this core reinforce. This core reinforce, and then this one is just kind of extra. It doesn't need to really be here. Also can't get very far due to the mud. The mud is not very good, no. Ah, where should it go then? Five. Uh, it can get this far. Just, it can't get past the HQ without force marching, which it can, but I don't want to force march it all the way up there. These units are very much going to swing around, so let's go ahead and just move it up maybe this way, or... Or maybe I could keep it somewhere around here as like a guard for this HQ. In case this army, this literal army, decides to come up this way. Yeah, fuck it. Let's keep it as like a, a little rear guard protecting this. That works fine to me. Let's go ahead and hit this with the tactical bombers as well. The Africa tactical bombers. Another one damage dealt. None taken. No more fighter. Okay, good. So no more fighters. Great. Okay, Um, let's swap in the 10th army. They don't have enough supply to do anything else anyway, really. And I'm going to use the first army's attack. There you go. We wiped out that enemy. Can't get there due to probably mostly the mud, honestly. We have one more bomber capable of doing something. And going up against one of these is going to be our best bet for this turn. We're going to do the most amount of damage over here. We have the most capacity to do damage to this core. So let's weaken that core a little bit. There's also up here. But I'm trying to focus on the really important stuff. I'm definitely going to get elite reinforcements for this bomber. And now let's go ahead and bomb this core. Dealing one damage. We weren't supposed to deal any, so that's awesome. And now we have Blitz prepared and prepared across a fucking river. Hmm. Let's do the prepared across the river. Four damage dealt. None taken. Perfect. And some XP gained. I gotta keep in mind they might retreat up here. So let's attack with the core next. Dealing four whole damage and taking none. Isn't that great? This army coming up to the front to kind of take the spot of this core can barely get anywhere right now. We will hmm, attack with this army. Finishing off that enemy core. So we wiped out two enemy units on this front. That's always good. But again, look at this. We can't push up at all just due to zones of control and the mud. So we've killed two, but they might just shift two more in there. But it's a grinder, you know, and we have a lot of firepower here. Arguably, a similar amount or more than the Japanese is fighting China with. We can win this. We're very good at winning in grinders, especially while I keep giving my already experienced units even more benefits, such as elite reinforcements that the Soviets just don't have due to them being essentially new to the war, unlike some others what a supply here it's no bueno let's move you over there sir this tank is gonna go somewhere north i don't really know to do what yet but we're gonna send it north that's where it was always headed we're gonna attack with the africa core dealing one damage taking no damage attack with the other core 13th or something dealing no damage but keeping this guy's entrenchment nice and low Preparing him for when, I guess, a tank swoops down upon him or something to free up other units as we see how to handle anything up here in this swamp. Actually, there is a way to claim this fortification for myself and basically reserve a permanent spot next to Moscow. I was going to use this for flanking, 
but I think this will just work better. We've already stopped the enemy fighters. Let's go ahead and just drop this paratrooper over there. And we've landed. Landing casualties, but we didn't actually take any damage, so I don't know what that's about. We don't want to attack with these numbers, but we've claimed the hex, and that's the important part. Doesn't enable anyone else to move in due to zones of control. We'll move these fighters up here to try to convince one of the HQs to take it so that I can reinforce it more fully since it's taken some damage now and it needs help. <laughs> so that's my way of trying to convince it to go along. I have 438 MPPs left and honestly, I think I've done most of the important stuff I need to do. All the fighty fronts are basically taken care of. Now it just comes down to actually spending points. Oh, one very obvious thing we want is some better advanced subs. That is so important. There's also advanced tanks. But I didn't really build up a big tank force as Germany, which is probably dumb, honestly. Probably should have done that, but I didn't build tanks, really. I, d I am doing that for the miners, so they have some new ones. But overall, I've been way more reliant on other things, including my subs, because a lot of these were free. We'll go ahead and research advanced subs the next step. That's 288 MPPs remaining. Speaking of, let's give some reinforcements to these subs. This one will be... Maxed out now, 244 MPPs remaining. We have plenty of garrisons. We don't need any more of those at the moment. There's not a whole lot else that we would need to upgrade this turn navally. There's all these new anti-tanks, which honestly, I don't think they're really going to be that useful, but we got them for bargain bin prices. So I'm happy with that anyway. We can go ahead. We're going to upgrade the fighter, I'd say. That's over Finland. Now that it's technically protecting these maritime bombers, you never know, some Soviets could try to be sneaky and show up there. We still have enough to go for researching advanced tanks, even anti-tank weapons to make the anti-tanks more valuable. The Well, we have more of them now, I think, than we have tanks. Uh, maybe not including all the coalition ones, actually. But 196. Yeah, I think I'm going to take that. I'm going to dump it into... Just normal advanced tanks, because that's a very valuable thing for Germany. And then that's pretty much good. I think that's our whole turn. I don't think there's anything else actually really remaining. I could, again, reinforce some of this stuff, but I could also just save the points and then do that again later. I do like getting our research to be as high as possible. Sometimes it's not always smart, but against the AI, we seem to have the capacity to do that quite a bit. We're still not quite up there, but we do have a lot of researches maxed out, actually, which is really nice. With that being pretty much maxed, so let's go ahead and hit end turn and see what the allies have in store. Communist China surrenders. Bye-bye, bitch. 118 MPPs for a stretch of land like this? That's a sweet deal. Disrupt shipping. Disrupt shipping. Oh, they got no supply. Oh my god, did that turn off their convoy route? Dude, that turned off their convoy route completely. Oxfam founded to provide famine relief to those starving in Europe. I didn't realize that. Yeah, if I have rules about ports needing supply, that means they must as well. I think the other one with Australia is probably guarded, so that probably wouldn't have the same effect as this. Holy shit, I didn't even think of using them like that to actually stop convoy routes from running altogether. That's crazy. Corregidor. Corregidor. Wait, which one's Corregidor? What did I capture that's called Corregidor? I don't even know. But Japan's finishing up some text. Oh, that's Corregidor. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's right. Okay. Cool. Now let's see the allies turn. See how they hurt me. Uh. Operations. Italian sub attacked. Dives. Battleships are moving. Don't know where. German sub attacked. Dives. Yeah, I didn't really move that one, did I? I just kind of like left it directly in place. Didn't really think about that. I'm recording this. I'm pretty tired. I didn't sleep very well for these past two episodes. It's fine. Let's see. Woo! One damage to our sub. Two damage to their destroyer. And that's against an Italian sub. You pretty much lost that there. Hey, there's that light cruiser, which is still choosing to attack subs for some reason. No damage to either side. Uh, rediscovering us. Okay. That ship is finally leaving Fort Blair. Do we own that naval thing yet? 
then? Oh my god! Did they not know that we were there? They must have known we were there. There's a fucking tank that just railed its way in there. That's terrifying. Hi, please go away. Some Chinese communist movements. I think they might be afraid that I'm going to advance from Chengdu, even though I have no such plans to do that. You know that paratrooper? Could probably paratroop its way towards Lan Chao. At some point. Maybe. Oh no! We took damage. Yeah, I haven't found it worthwhile to invest in that anti-air yet. Uh, we'll see. Damn! They're trying to bomb our units. They took seven total damage. Dealt nothing. Incredible. Indians pushing up in every area, every region. Remember, these paratroopers don't even have supply. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Speaking of paratroopers, hello! You're not the same ones from the north, are you? Or are you? I don't know, but they're there now. Indians taking literally everything except my oil. <laughs> what? Oh, that fucking... That sub's going right up to the actual convoy route. What the fuck? Okay. Damn, I still can't believe you can turn off a convoy route if you put your sub in the correct place. If you put any naval ship in the correct place for long enough. I didn't even think of that. U.S. forces deploying Samoa. Oh, that's not good. I haven't taken that. That's really not good. We only raided UK, Australia. We turned off UK, New Zealand completely, so that's cool. Only we could really stay there, like, forever. Light cruiser in Perth. Core in... Oh, so they, they moved back. They were actually closer last turn. Yeah, you know, I see how having submarines here and here would be so good. You could probably turn off every fucking convoy going to the UK. But you'd have to really probably dominate their navy to pull that off, huh? Why are you in silent mode? You know the terrible part is? I think it was like that for a while. But, no, oh well, it's fine. You could get an upgrade in some elite reinforcements. We can't reach any ports right now unless we do this. Well then, you know what? Why don't we just do that then? Let's just head around like this for right now. No need to speed. It's going to take two turns no matter what to get to a port and do anything well it might take longer now actually i want to get to one where i can give it an elite reinforcement that's kind of like the big thing probably from this town these two indians do have some supply so we don't want to go on any offensive with a garrison or anything like that Woo! supply here is terrible awful move these cores as far forward as they can get and move the hq forward as well because it's going to need to follow after we gotta come back and defeat these Indians, but this is a lot of stuff. India doesn't get a lot of stuff. I remember, I played India. Why do the Brits have a sub coming after my subs? I don't know. Well, let's attack this battleship. We can get a 5 to 1 ratio against the Duke of York battleship. Yeah, dude. 5 damage dealt. None taken. Holy shit. Let's... Hmm. Let's head down like this and attack the U-30. Three damage dealt, but no cigar. Still have another one over here? Yeah. Yeah, we do. This one. Come down hither. Finish the bitch off. Shattered. 680 and M bonus. We have destroyed the Duke of York. Incredible. I guess we can kind of leave these guys here to raid a little bit. This one really needs fucking supply. Did it just lose supply from attacking? I think it did. Okay. Well, then in that case, we'll get you as far this way as we can. The Italians could use some recovery in general. I don't know if I have any fucking ports open. Probably not. I've got to reinforce this one for like two turns straight because it's so injured. Yeah, St. Nazaire's fucking useless right now. We can speed this one up here. That would work. No, while we're at it, let's just send the Axum sub right over here to Le Havre. Le Havre. And let's get this one moving as well. Straight this way, and then... We want to send it pretty far north, but for right now, this will do. As far as it can get, give it something to raid, and then it'll head north, because we got a lot of things, a lot of places where their convoys are flowing goods and we're not doing anything to stop them. We'll upgrade this sub 
U32. Give elite reinforcements to the U73. That one is fully ready to go now, which is awesome. And then there's this one, U35. Give that elite reinforcements. One more turn and then that'll be kind of maxed out. Leonardo da Vinci needs to get to a port, but it can't go fast because it's next to an enemy. I don't, I don't know. The other one could go pretty fast. I don't know why this one's any different, but it is. I don't want to attack that. Although, if I did, um, no. Okay, never. I would say there's a chance. There is a tiny chance I'm extra effective and I destroy this thing. That is possible. Even then, I could certainly finish it off with a elite heavy cruiser. The problem is. There's still other battleships around here, and I don't know where they are. But quite honestly, looking at where they were heading, I think their goal is to go towards the Indian Ocean, maybe? So moving these things down here really didn't have a huge point. I don't I don't want to move them out and then have a battleship roll up, be like, sup, dude, and then hurt them. But I would love to kill this destroyer. I really would. <sighs> well, let's see how we do Okay, we just fucking wiped it out with the sub. Hell yeah, you go, Italy. Outperforming, I approve. Head northeast somewhere to safety. You guys, you're gonna go back up here because I think we're literally just running in the direction of where the battleships are going. Let's stay around here where we can maybe attack some targets of opportunity, these destroyers, when they show themselves a little bit better. This one's also down to three now. Oh, wait, no, this was the one down to three. No, no, both of them. Okay, I guess attacking uses supply. That makes a lot of sense to me. Looking further into Egypt, there's still Alexandria to deal with. It is currently fully entrenched, which is never good. Let's just go try to, yeah, we'll just, we'll give elite reinforcements to this bomber. We'll attack by land. So we dealt one damage, we took one damage, never the best resolution in situations like this, but it is a resolution nonetheless. We need more than one attack per turn to actually bleed through the entrenchment, however. Let's attack with the 10th army. No damage dealt, but one taken, the exact opposite of what was supposed to happen there. Damn, we can really surround this bitch, huh? Yeah, we can. Let's go ahead and move the tank around there, just kind of further surround it. Move the 5th army up for a blitz attack. Uh, what does this core going to do? I guess it doesn't have to do a whole lot. We'll send this core... We have to we want to send it somewhere. I'll send it... That's a really good question. <laughs> I'll send it here for now. We're going to move this HQ line forward because I want to get one onto Cairo proper. So let's move all these HQs forward. All of them, all of them, all of them. And then I really still don't know where this garrison is going. So it's not in any rush. It's going to go sit on that town for right now. It's fine. So have enemies roaming around here somewhere. I don't know if they're getting closer this way. Another good reason to have this core here. Hell, a fucking tank could drive out and cause some problems by this hill potentially next turn. I'm not sure. Let's find out. For that reason, I should actually probably leave this core right here. Because a hill's hard to get past. This field is not hard to get to. Let's keep the HQ covered. Our HQ can just keep going normally because it's really, really not in any rush at all. So that's how we're just going to move it for right now. And then we have not much else of importance to do with Italy at all. I do want to give this garrison better infantry weapons because it's in a bit of a danger zone right here. This one not as much, but this one especially. And with that, I believe we have a nice full episode. So here we are in June 1942. Whoo! We've been invading the Soviets for about a year, a little more than a year now. This is what we've accomplished. So hard to get a good overview of it, but this is what we've accomplished. Isn't it great? Wonder how well this will work out. Guess we'll see. For now, thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.